Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Thomas Nazo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. We find ourselves in a dicey situation. I see, I see. I roll for perception. What do I get? You fail. I'm invisible to you. The pun goes over your head. <laughs> uh, but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic issue number 80. And in this issue, the main six play a live action role playing game, or LARP for short. Haha. Yeah. Uh-huh. So before we hit into the review, um, first impressions are in order and silver. What do you have to say? Well, this one is sort of just fun silliness. A not going to see a lot of character exploration. The conflict is all in in their heads, basically. Though it is fun to see how Pinky, the DM, how she handles this. Though, I'll tell you true, I kept expecting Shining Armor to show up and say, Don't forget about me! (laughs) Yeah, you know, uh, I I was expecting the prince to be shining, but oh no, it's not him. (laughs) Now that happens to, to him enough in real life. Oh yeah, that's true too. <laughs> Dumb. Shining Armor and Kane's got captured again. Oh, and April O'Neil is in trouble. And Timmy found, fell down the well. Oh, must be a Tuesday. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, boys, but yes, yes. Um, this this one is really interesting, and yeah, um, no high stakes, no big threat or anything. But art here is done. By uh, Kate Sharon, 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 yes, Kate Sharon. So yeah, this is not bad. This is not bad. So uh, before we head into the full review, uh, first impressions are in order. And silver, what do you think? Wait, I think I thought I gave my first impression. Did I? I forgot. Did I? Well, I I did talking about you know lo- uh, just enjoying a silly, low stakes story. Oh. Wow. With uh, Shining Armor was going to show up, and then he get kidnapped, and then apparently we hit a time warp, and we went back in time. Wow, my brain. My brain's out of it. Damn. Okay, so um, for me, uh, this comic was enjoyable. Uh, pretty fun, simple comic. Like, this is a really nice one shot. Um, but <laughs> uh, for people who play, or who people know, who knows about D&D, this is frustrating. <laughs> This is really frustrating. Thankfully, I know very little to nothing of it, so I got no problems. Ha <laughs> ha! Ignorance is bliss. Yes. But anywho, so for you guys at home who have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off the comic with a mysterious cloaked figure. She commands the bravery to come here and... She does not know what will happen to them, but that's not dilly dally, and let's get right into the danger, and let's start to go larping, yay! <laughs> so we we see our heroes uh, hanging out around a park or something, and Pinkie Pie erect a tower, and the tower is not that big but it's kind of huge on the inside what yes a tardis tower yep i know and uh we we get to see the characters our character here so we have rainbow dash as wrecker the fighter rarity as rarity the cleric satishai as shadow dancer the rogue twilight sparkle as glitter lights the mage and applejack as calamity the ranger so we have our um, characters and their roles and Pinkie Pie as the game, mas- uh, game maker not game master the story or the scenario here is simple uh, there's a prince tra- prince or princess I-, I forgot it's a prince prince alright so but but he acts as the classic princess in distress <laughs> okay so anyway the, the scenario here is there is a prince in a tower being held captive by a dragon and whoever manages to save the prince will get the grand prize of Pinkie Pie's cake. Ooh la la. And with that, all the main six 
uh, awestruck and can't wait to go get the cake. And Pinkie Pie goes up to Applejack and says, uh, Applejack, where's your costume? <laughs> and Applejack says, this is my costume. I'm a ranger. Ain't even need to roleplay. Mm, okay. We, we get to see a gamut of the characters being interest, disinterested and interested. We get to see uh, Rarity asking, are we done? Uh, we get to see Rainbow Dash getting really into it. So is Twilight and so on. And yeah, uh, before we carry on with the next part, I'm going to stop here. So anyway, uh, Silver, what do you think? Pinky went the extra mile by making artificial trees around the tower. They're not actual trees. They're, you can see an actual tree in the background. But oh, she went above and beyond. I got to give her props. While the tower looks a bit shoddily put together, it's still the effort. And the fact that she magically imbued it with greater interior than exterior, that goes a step beyond as well. Oh, true. I mean, she's been hacking out with Doctor Who's a bit. Yeah, well, that's My Little Pony, the manga. <laughs> yes. Who knows? Who knows, right? Although Bulk must have had a lazy afternoon if he can just st stand up, th uh, sit up there waiting to be rescued. Yeah, I mean this. Oh, help! Help me, please! <laughs> oh, dearest me! So, I, I need to ask for your opinion. What do you think of the characters and their roles? Well, okay. Rarity just seems really un uninvested in this. I mean, she's just yawning her way. She doesn't even come up with an alternate name. It's like, just, uh, is it over yet? Twilight is a magician, and R Applejack as a, as a ranger, and R uh, Rainbow Dash as a fighter all make sense. They're also that expect... Fluttershy as the as the thief or the what is it the rogue. shadow shadow dance rogue. rogue yeah in some ways it's very in character because she wants to be she tries to be unseen unobserved she just wants to sneak past and not cause a big stir but at the same time she gave up the chance to communicate with animal friends which is totally her thing Applejack is horning in on her thing yeah but at the same time too I I, I uh, do. <laughs> Okay, a while back before, uh, there was this D and D shirt done by something or someone. I don't remember, but it was official, and uh, the characters were what Twilight was a wizard, uh, Rainbow Dash was a rogue, Rarity, if I'm not mistaken, was a cleric, uh, Fluttershy was a druid. And Applejack, I was, I don't remember, but still, the main six had their roles, and they were, they were spot on. They were spot on. But in this one, you know what? I don't mind because they want to have fun, and they thought about it, and yeah, this this kind of role kind of suits them. And personally, for me, if I were to play D and D, I would like to be a bard. But a bard for a newcomer is not easy, from what I understand and from what I experience. What would you like to be, Silver? Mm, well, I've actually been in past games. I've been a paladin and a mer and a bard merchant. What's a paladin? Oh, basically, uh, he's sort of the group tank, very effective against undead and unholy monsters. Usually portrayed as something of a stick in the mud because they tend to follow a very strict moral code. Oh, uh, over your head. <laughs> What's a pal? Oh God, Spoonie! <laughs> yeah, what's a paladin? <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Ultima review. Uh, that was so much fun. His last review. Yeah. Sorry, I'm making it dark, but Spoonie is a is a tragic tale. Yeah. Uh, fell from grace. But uh, we're not we're not here to review YouTubers. We're not here to review YouTubers. Uh, I'm sure he's a great guy, and I'm sure he's putting out awesome content. But I, I still like his previous ones better. Well, I'm, honestly, I'm afraid it's no on both counts. Ah oh, man! But as you say, we're not here to review. Mm -hmm. But anywho, um, where were we? Where was I? Yes. Um. Uh, let's see. Yes. Um. Characters and whatnot. Yeah. You, you've been a paladin. You've been a merchant. Yep. And then I was a techno mage in a sci-fi roleplay. Ah, nice. 
I only played Pathfinder once and I was a bard. Didn't really do well. Mm-hmm. But anywho, uh, I, I... Oh, so it barred, it barred your path? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I do hope that I could expand on my experience with playing D&D in the future. Uh, Magic the Gathering has uh, is going to do a crossover with Dungeons & Dragons. So... Maybe I could expand my knowledge through there. Probably. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. But anywho, let's carry on. Let's carry sure, on. Surely there's a beho- beholder card. Who knows? There's going to be something else. But anyway, um, carrying on, carrying on. So we see our heroes uh, having a huddle, uh, declaring or trying to figure out how to handle this threat or how to go in or how to approach this problem. Uh, Rainbow Dash wants to go through it head on. Uh, go through the door just smashing. Uh, Applejack wants to ask her animal friends because she is a ranger and can do so. I thought that was the druid. But anyway. Uh, Fluttershy wants to go in stealth. And Twilight wants to use smarts, logics and whatnot. And Rarity just wants to use her... Just use all of it. And no one can really agree on anything and they decide to do things on their own. And this is the first mistake of D&D. Do not split the party because the GM will have one heck of a time to rattle you up or wrangle you up. So, Silver, would you like to tell the story of how our heroes fail? Well, first, Rainbow Dash the fighter doth ascend it without yon stairs. For she hath wings and knows how to break yon rules. Screw with yon rules. I have appendages. But at the same time, too, she did say that, oh, the stairs are booby traps, so I play smart by flying through the castle. Huzzah! But in her arrogance, she doth not check for other traps. And so, therefore, verily, she gets pelted by flames, which are really tomatoes. Oh, no. And so, and so the fighter is flayed. Well, yeah. And uh, the, <laughs> she just noticed, oh, Dragon Tower, right. Yeah, f- flames. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, ra- with Rainbow Dash now, we go to the next person or the next pony. And that's... Uh, Fluttish... No, no, no. Who was the name again? Uh, Glitter? Twilight Sparkle? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's Twilight Sparkle, but it's... Yeah, Glitter... Gl- Glitter Light. Yes, Glitter Light, the mage. And how did she tackle the problem? Well, she... She doth ascend the stairs, proving that she is less aware than Rainbow Dash, but forgot an agility check, and so, therefore, verily, again... She is brought low by the tra- by the tower's insidious traps. Huzzah! <laughs> yeah, and and said traps are stalactites. They fall upon her and injure her, and in reality, they're what are they even silver? Well, okay, either she's wrapped Twilight and Rainbow in thorny vines or barbed wire. Either way, uh, Pinky is being way too hardcore about this. Yeah, I mean, Pinky, um, LARPing is not supposed to hurt people. But it's not fun until someone gets hurt. <laughs> That's bad. But anywho, uh, where outside the castle, we are greeted by our two heroes, which is the, you know what, <laughs> I, I have to go up for a bit because I can't remember the names. Uh, give me a second. Cal- Calamity and Rarity. Yes. We are greeted by the cleric and the ranger. So the ranger decides to start a plan by calling on her animal friends, which they do appear. I think because Rarity is surprised because she asks, uh, your aunt Fluttershy, how, how did you? <laughs> and uh, Calamity just responds by, I'm a ranger. I'm Batman. <laughs> And she calls upon her animal friends to help her get to the top of the tower. So first up is she asks her squirrel buddies to collect all the acorn to create a very tall 
mount so she can climb up the tree and she asks her bird friends to pick her up to the treetop and then Fluttershy, sorry, Pinkie Pie just reminds her that you're not, uh, you're not a high enough level ranger for that move and She's stuck on the roof because, yeah, her level's too low to she can't really communicate with animals. And she fa- fell down? No, no chat? No. Yep. Um, she's just stuck in the tree, I guess. I got to call baloney on this page. Which one? Where Applejack's making this attempt. Okay. It's the page where the actions are numerically sequenced. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing. In an American audience... We read left to right, top to bottom. Ah, yes. This, or the orientation of action in this comic is bottom to top, left to right. Mm. But the first thing you see is on the right, and you're almost tracing a line backwards and down. It's a very unnatural read, and that's why it has to be uh, numerically sequenced. Because in trying to do this all in one panel, I'm afraid the artist really is fighting the audience's natural reading tendency. And it just doesn't work. It's almost like this comic set them up to fail. Yeah, it's kind of that. And, okay, yes, it's true. When you look at a comic page, um, just zooming out, like you just if you just look at it, your eyes is naturally attracted to the first word bubble that you see. And... The human eyes will take a look, see at what's the first or the topmost uh, word bubble. And that would be Pinkie Pie saying you're not uh, a high enough level ranger for that move. So naturally, we'll read top to bottom. And because of the number, that is one of the ways for us to uh, properly read the sequence. But I do agree with you, Sibyl. I do agree with you that what we got here is wrong. But... In terms of Comixology app, it doesn't matter because the way that Comixology does it is that it will zoom in onto a panel and it will move it to the following panel to create a sequence. So it kind of works in the sense of if you're a, I won't say motion comic, but motion panel, it works that way. Well, I try to go for hard copies whenever I can, although our current human malware situation makes that difficult. A rumpf. It's true that, true that. A rumpfity, rumpfity, rumpf. But, but anywho. Yeah, but anywho. So with that, we get to see, yeah, okay, Um, Applejack falls down. Sorry, Applejack falls down, and we get to see that it's Fluttershy's turn. Fluttershy's plan is pretty okay because... She shoots a crossbow across uh, the tree that she's at uh, to the castle and tries to swing her way to success. And Pinkie Pie did a roll for Fluttershy and it was a critical fail. Mm, Terrible. Terrible, terrible. So everybody in the group failed and, well, Pinkie's... Uh, Pinky the GM says, okay guys, uh, you better hurry or else the uh, castle will be destroyed in one hour. Oh no! So the group here decides to go team up and try to tackle the castle as a group. So they use the talent of all of the uh, ponies to figure out how to deal with the tower. And... Fluttershy shoots an arrow to the top of the tower, creating a rope for Rarity to climb up. Twilight calculates on uh, risk aversion and stuff. I don't get what Twilight is doing here. Do you know? Sparkus Minimusius. Hmm. Because I I don't really get it. And yeah, um, while Rarity is climbing up, she stops in between the flaming, uh, what do you call this, booby trap. Uh, Applejack and Rainbow Dash comes up, stopping the flame. 
And yeah, Rainbow Dash makes sense because she has a shield. Applejack, no. What? Well, apparently Applejack's tush is fireproof, as are squirrels. Not many people know that squirrels are naturally fireproof. <laughs> yes, uh, that is totally a thing. By the way, I think Twilight's spell was to make sure the the arrowhead that served as an anchor didn't fall out. Uh, it's hyper secured. Uh, okay, um, I, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Uh, so, anywho, uh, Rarity goes to the top of the castle and tries to rescue the princess or prince. Sorry, the prince. Uh, well, it's not sure if sh- she. Uh, if the rescue team is real or not, because it could be an evil minion of the evil queen. But Rarity is come, uh, Rarity come prepared with Kale. Oh, yay! And they enter the, what you call this, uh, door and save the prince. And yay! They, they, they succeed. Now, good question is, who gets to eat the cake? They head back to Sugar Cube Corner and hey, Pinkie Pie ate all the cake. Oh no, because they took so long. And Pinkie Pie just says, You all made it to uh, level 2. That's your real reward. So, yay? And with that, comic ends. After Rarity declares she'll be in charge next time. <laughs> yep, true. <laughs> Yeah, I I think what Rarity could be a good GM. She she's a stickler for rules. Although hers would all be a fashion show. <laughs> oh God, yeah, that, that, that's not good too. But still, um, it, it's it's still a fun comic. Silver, what do you think? Well, there are two things that that stand out to me. Uh, when going over this again, for starters, Rarity is decidedly not invested in this, and yet some reason, she can see Applejack summoning animal critters. <laughs> Ergo, she's swept up in the imagination no matter what. The second is when Pinky says that she'll detonate the tower. Apparently, her commitment to LARPing is so grand that everyone's actually a little afraid of her. <laughs> they actually think she'll do that. <laughs> They're like, no. No, we, we, we can't risk it. What does that say? <laughs> When you're so kooky that people aren't sure if you'll blow them up. I, I, I'm i guessing there's a butler somewhere just saying, some people just want to see the world burn. Or as other, some have just have fun lighting the match. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh... But either way. Also, Bulk just sort of disappears, which makes me wonder, was he really there to begin with? Uh, I'm sure he's just back home, like after finishing with the LARP. And I think he has a date with Octavia. Yes, apparently. <laughs> wonder what they, I wonder what they do, for uh, for conversation. Uh, do you like music? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, oh, good. What kind of music do you like? Classical. Ah, yes. Mm. <laughs> oh man, that, that that conversation is going to be boring. Oh, but but anywho, um, anything else? But I mean. Uh, okay, I, I'll just try and lead you on. What do you think of the D&D premise here? Because uh, I think they gave us this after the one where it's Boys Nights Out, something like that, where we get to see the guys playing D&D. Well, the guys was a bit more fun and passionate because they were celebrating and they were in this full fantasy world. This one is just, you know, you find yourself in Yon Tower. There be a princess at the top. And you be all like, get ye prince. And you can't get ye prince. <laughs> and then you just have to sit there and wonder why you can't get ye prince. Because <laughs> the graphics ain't going to tell you. Forsooth. <laughs> it's black and white loss. So, I mean, it's fun. I enjoyed uh, the silliness. But it's also, I think it could have gone further. I think you actually could have done a multi-parter with this. Mm-hmm. Even if you leave at the time limit and leaving everyone to wonder, would Pinky really blow up the tower? Because it's Pinkie Pie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, okay, um, let's just go bonkers and say what could, uh, what's a better story than this? I mean, 
uh, it's not fair, but hey, it, it's fun to just see stuff, right? Suppose that Twilight and Friends had an argument and it was affecting their real life friendship. Ergo, Pinky sets up this D and this D and D campaign to try and mend the rift or get them to once again be on a harmonious wavelength. Ergo, the struggle in the fictional world actually increases the uh, the friendship in the real world. Mm-hmm. In this one, the in this what we got, the role playing actually decreases their teamwork at first mm. before they restore it. True. I mean, the, the LARP does help, but in all honesty, uh, for me, I would just like uh, maybe a, maybe a two parter. Maybe a two parter would be good. The setup and the cliffhanger, and then the conclusion and the resolution for the second part. But uh, for me, I, I think a better scenario would be uh, Shining Armor just invites Twilight, and Twilight invites her friends to play some Ogos and Oubliettes. Or you know what? Not even Twilight. It could be just Spike. And Spike invites the main six just to hang out and try playing uh, uh, O&O. And Big's like, nope! Me? What about me? Yeah, stuff to do. They, they can't really... You know what? This would be even better. Uh, since what? Uh, since they don't really need to pay the voice actors, just they just have to draw. We could get... We could get um, the scenario where... Okay. Uh, Spike wants to play Ogres and Ugliets with his quote-unquote brother, which is Shining. And, well, uh, they go to the Crystal Empire. And, well, since, what, Rainbow Dash had fun, Pinkie Pie had fun, so they invited, uh, they got invited too. So we have a crew of, what, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Spike, Big Mac, Discord, the five party member, that's okay, that's good enough. And then also uh, Shining Armor as the GM. And you have a scenario where Discord with his zany powers uh, brings all the D&D things to life and we get to see the character go on their merry adventure. No conflict, no uh, no personal conflict, no nothing. It's just a D&D adventure and whatever cookiness that um, Shining can cook up. And yeah, there's already fun there because you have Discord creating the scenario for the ponies um, making it real for them, and we get to see them just having fun. I, I wish they did it, but... But all in all, it is still just a fun, harmless comic. Other than Peaky maybe being a little bit of a jerk for eating the whole cake on her own. Yep, I mean, uh, the comic's fun. Uh, would I say that it was a must-buy? Mm, in all honesty, I would say get it in a bundle. If you can have a humble bundle sale, or if it's on sale or not, I mean, yeah, it is on sale. It should be around two dollars. So go get it if you want to see a fun comic. But let's see. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next comic will be kind of cool. I forgot. Well, what will happen in the next one? Oh, you're you're putting me on the spot here. I right? I need to cast my mind back to issue eighty one. Because if I'm not mistaken, it's just uh, Rainbow Dash and the Wonder Balls, but Scootaloo and uh, Rumble is there. Oh, this one. Uh, Fool's Friends Weekends at the Wonder Bolt Academy. Yes, it's a flashback to the one Earth Pony who joined the Wonder Bolts. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. That, that one was... Oh, wow, this one was... Okay, this one is interesting. This one is interesting. I, I like the idea for this one. And yet the art is going to draw more than its share share criticism. Really? Oh, yes. Because I'm taking a look-see here, and it's not that bad. I mean, it goes back to uh, the first issue of... um, What now? The, The Micros? Oh, but you haven't yet realized the vectoring. Oh. The placed assets... Oh, and the poses that are not of the author's work, the artist's work. Oh, we, we're good. We're hmm, okay. We're back to that shenanigan. I didn't, aren't we? 
Yo, yes, someone's been using resources. Oh, God, I, I've totally forgot about that one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Ooh, I, I guess there's something for us to talk about on that one. Yes, in due time. Yeah, but anywho, um, that's next week's uh, review. Uh, well, at least one step ahead. Uh, we'll discuss on when we'll stop because we have other things to do. Maybe 85 if... Probably, I don't know. I, I can't promise you guys anything. But anywho, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show and my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, lots of places. On Twitter and DeviantArt, do a little search for MLP Silver Quill and I shall appear. Then you can support me through Patreon or uh, Kofi with Silver Quill. Uh, on YouTube, doing a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I'll pop up. Boing! Hello! And then on Wednesdays, you can find either an editorial or comic review by myself on EquestriaDaily.com. Awesome. Guys, go check him out because he does great work and it'll be a shame if you missed it. So anyway, and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyOverLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review, discussion, podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also Master of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill and we'll go- of the Plus 20 Snark. <laughs> and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. So, are, are we going to roll for initiative or what? Because I'm sure that the episode's ending, but we kind of need to roll the die to make sure that we really end it. Wow, that's just a critical fail right there. Here, I, uh, I know the surest way to end it. Oh no, that's one way to go. <laughs> Sorry, no, that's bad. You set me up and I could have gone for... Oh, this we we went out we went out with a bang. <laughs>